Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Caroline Opio, and I work for the Food and Agriculture Organization in Rome. Um, today, I've been asked to talk about the environmental implications of the livestock uh, sector. And I, I took the lib liberty of expanding the menu a little bit, mainly because uh, I know the focus is on the environment, but when we talk about sustainability, I think we need to broaden up a little bit and, and think uh, about the implications in terms of social, uh, social aspects as well as uh, the economy. So what I will try to do uh, within this uh, presentation is to cast uh, the discussion and uh, within um, the entire um, uh, issue of sustainability of the livestock sector. So as you know, um, I think it's not news that we are facing a global crisis and um, uh, it has been published that today we are using about 30% more resources than the earth can replenish. And this is going to get worse. It's going to get worse because the population is going to increase. It's going to get worse uh, because um, there's going to be a need for more food, more mouths, more, more mouths to feed, as well as uh, the fact that consumption patterns are changing. So this, is, this has um, created and is creating uh, pressure on, on agricultural systems to analyze the way we produce feed. Uh, what we are faced with today is an increasing um, challenge regarding resources. Uh, there is increasing resource scarcity, and in this case, they refer to land, water, um, nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus that are required um, to produce crop products, uh, energy, uh, as well as climate change. We've already heard about climate change and the impact that it has on, on food production. But um, there is also the fact that uh, the agriculture sector does contribute towards climate change, and we need to address this issue. So uh, with regard to the livestock sector um, and the environment, we all know very well, and I'm not going to, I don't think what I'm going to present is, 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 is really, you all know uh, the impacts of the livestock sector because a lot has been said over the last few years on, on, on the livestock sector. Um, so the livestock sector contributes towards pollution, it contributes towards degradation, uh, biodiversity loss and greenhouse gas emissions. It's also, um, and, and this is through its relationship with, with natural resources, it uses about 26% of the land for grazing, it uses about a third of the land for feed production, a third of the arable land for feed production. Uh, it is also responsible for 20% of the, the degradation on rangelands. Uh, it uses 15% of the global water in terms of consumption for the livestock population uh, as well as uh, partly feed production. But that figure doesn't include uh, the pollution uh, that it creates. But it's also a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. And with, uh, we estimate that uh, it contributes about 14.5% of the greenhouse gas emissions, of the global greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, just very quickly on this map, this shows you the distribution of livestock production systems. And the point I would like to, to highlight here is the fact that you find livestock everywhere and they are very closely linked to the natural resource space and hence the impact is, is really quite large. Um, the livestock sector uh, provides about 31% of the total protein supply. And if we look at... Um, the composition of this pro of the protein uh, across the different regions, uh, you can see that in North America, in uh, in Europe, as well as in Australia, New Zealand, that a large proportion or composition of that protein of the total protein that is consumed by human beings is from the livestock sector. While in developing countries, there is I mean, there's the the proportion within from the livestock sector is really uh, quite low, as opposed to South America is is rather unique because of their um, their long tradition of of consuming uh, beef products. If we break that figure down, then we have and look at just the meat consumption across the different regions. Again, we can see that it's very high in 
industrialized countries and, and uh, relatively low in, 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 uh, developing, in the developing world. But also what, we need to, what I need to, or wanted to highlight here is the fact that you have the trends are changing, there's a shift. Uh, this uh, meat consumption within the regions, within the industrialized regions is decreasing and while in the developing regions it is increasing. So uh, just quickly uh, to talk about some of the trends that are some of the, the drivers of these trends in consumption as well as um, uh, in consumption of, of livestock products. Uh, and this is not new to you, it's mainly population growth that has occurred over the last uh, three decades, income growth, as well as urbanization, because once uh, urbanization occurs, you find that people are eating, because of their higher incomes, they're eating more um, livestock products and, and more processed products as well. And this is a trend that will continue, particularly in the developing world, um, because that's where the growth is going to happen. So, um, um, with regard to production, uh, because uh, uh, the trends in uh, in consumption have changed, there's also there's also a shift in 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 uh, in uh, in the production uh, trends. We find that there's less uh, products being livestock products being produced in the industrialized world as opposed to in the developing countries in order to meet the the growing demand for livestock products. So um, if we look at this from uh, the food perspective angle, uh, uh, food security and nutrition, the livestock sector uh, supplies about 13% of the calories, and 20% of this is um, consumed in the developing countries, 30% uh, of the protein uh, worldwide, and more than 40% in the developing countries. And we also know that livestock products are important because it provides high protein micronutrients that you will not find in, 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 in many of uh, the other um, agricultural products. And one aspect that I would like to highlight about the livestock, uh, livestock sector is the fact that it, it's able to convert edible, non-edible products into edible and high value products. And that's an advantage of the livestock sector because it uses uh, byproducts, it uses products that cannot be consumed by the human, by humans and converts that into, into high protein. So this is a plus. Obviously, this is, um, this is the global figure and the situation varies across the different systems. If we're talking about grazing systems, obviously there is, uh, they are consuming more um, roughages and probably crop, crop residues and all. But if we're talking about the highly in, 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 um, intensive systems such as feedlots, there is a higher proportion of, of products such as grain and um, agro-industrial um, byproducts that are going into, 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 into production. And um, there's obviously a question of competition and, uh, for, for, for these products, but we also have to look at the efficiency of the system. Uh, and uh, obviously we know that these feedlots are more efficient, and, but the environmental problems are also very different I I within uh, the intensive systems. So, um, with regard to uh, income and employment, the sector is also very important. It supports about 800 million poor, of which 25% are in Sub-Saharan Africa and 45% in South Asia. It also contributes on a global scale 40% of uh, the agriculture GDP. In developing countries, this, this figure can be even higher because uh, this is what is actually, you know, uh, we, we can put dollar signs too, but we should also realize that in these in this countries that there are, you know, other values of uh, livestock that we cannot put dollar signs to. And there has been quite a huge growth within the sector, and this, this growth is, is, is expected to continue. Um, in many countries, the livestock sector is also important for economic growth. And it's, um, if we look at you know, countries like Brazil, we look at countries like Argentina, uh, South Africa, Botswana, uh, China as well, uh, the United States itself, because it, it does export quite a lot of uh, products. So um, livestock is a major source of income for, for many countries. And uh, just to cite a few figures from our estimates from uh, FAO start uh, contributes about 180 billion US dollars in terms of export. 
um, and 17% of all agriculture uh, export value. So I've already mentioned the fact that livestock have um, other values. It's not only about food. In many parts of the world, I mean, it does contribute directly and indirectly to food. Livestock products, livestock, produ um, livestock products such as manure, uh, as well as uh, the draft power uh, that is used in, in many parts of the world in order to, cu in order to, to cultivate uh, land is, uh, is contributing towards food security. Uh, it's also an, um, a, safety net, a safety net for many, um, many societies. Uh, and in places like Africa, uh, where I come from, you have um, you know, uh, farmers uh, keeping a cow, not because they're keeping it for their not for the milk and not for the, not for the meat, but it's, it's kept as a bank because uh, that farmer, whenever he needs money, can sell that cow in order to pay school fees for, for, the, for, for, for the children. Uh, to go to school. Um, also, uh, there are products such as leather and fibers, and um, five minutes, okay, I'll try to get through this, it's quite long. Um, but also the fact that in certain parts of the world you have um, livestock that pay, play an important role in, in culture and religion, and I cite countries such as India where we know that the cattle is, uh, is, is, is sacred. So um, what this highlights is the, is the fact that um, that when we talk about sustainability, the question is really more complex than what we think. We need to balance a number of, 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 of aspects, uh, not only uh, the environment, but we also need to think about the social part and the economic part. And um, with regard to the livestock sector, there is a need to balance the fact that we need to protect the, the environment, we need to improve the resource use efficiency of, of the sector, as well as to improve uh, um, um, the, 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 the contribution of the sector to food and nutrition security. So um, what is clear and uh, um, from these trends is the fact that uh, resource security, resource scarcity is a problem and will continue to be a problem. And it is really an economic reality. I, I just want to highlight the fact that you have, uh, over the past 10 years, what we have seen is an increase in, in one of the most important inputs into livestock production, which is feed. And, and, uh, and that increase is really due to the competition uh, for resources. And the other aspect that will affect and continues to affect and is actually affecting um, not only the livestock sector but agriculture in general is climate change. But one aspect is that the livestock sector is able and has the potential to address these uh, challenges that we are facing. So uh, I would like quickly to go through a few options that, w that we would need to, uh, that the livestock sector can implement. Sorry, I, I will go back to that. Um, one of those is addressing, particularly in certain regions, is addressing uh, the aspect of diets. Um, already we have seen that in, uh, in the industrialized world, we're eating almost you know, way above what we should be actually consuming. And therefore there, there is a possibility to, you know, to level off, and that is already happening at the moment, and, and, and reduce the amount of livestock products that we have in, 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 uh, um, in, in our diets. And uh, um, there's also uh, one of the other options is to, to, to improve, to increase uh, the use of material that has no alternative value uh, uh, in order to decrease competition with uh, other products such as grain that, are, that can be used for other purposes. Um, there's also um, improving the natural use efficiency within the sector, uh, but not only just the production bit, but looking at the entire value chain and seeing how, how best we can uh, um, improve uh, resource use efficiency. Um, another option of addre uh, to address um, the, the resource scarcity is uh, restoring the value to grasslands and payment for environmental services. Uh, and this is something that is already happening. And, uh, and this is to provide incentive to farmers to better manage their lands, as well as um, you know, um, putting a price on waste, uh, charging uh, producers who are polluting the environment for, for the negative impact on the environment. Um, so I will s basically, um, I, how much time do I have? One minute, okay, I'm gonna skip 
some of these, I'm sorry. No, I would just like to say that, okay, when we talk about sustainability of the sector, it's not only, I mean, the fact is that we have, we know what needs to be done. We know the technologies are available, but what we need to do, what needs to be done is to have better policies that can push uh, producers, that would push farmers, that would push the industry into implementing this, this, uh, these uh, technologies. We need better incentives in order to address that. But we also need better science. And, and uh, we, we know that uh, sometimes uh, uh, there have been a number of numbers of figures that have been used and, and used very no wrongly in the wrong context. We need to make sure that whatever science is produced can be contextualized, it can be used within the right context and not just extrapolated from one region to the next without really understanding um, the, 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 the livestock sector within, within the different regions. And I, I think that's really quite important. And um, again, I know we are in Europe, but I would like to stress the fact that, uh, that poverty is key to resource use, particularly in developing countries. And there is a need to provide you know, um, better investments, targeting smallholders, as well as knowledge uh, uh, to, to, to better manage the smallholder systems. And I, I mentioned some of this, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm concluding, uh, I'm sorry. And I mentioned, uh, here I just cite some of, uh, a few options in order to address smallholder systems. Uh, and um, with that, I would just like to say, uh, give a few concluding remarks. The fact is that scarcity will continue to, uh, resource scarcity will continue to determine the, gr the, the growth of the sector. The sector has a large potential to, to respond to resource scarcity. And sustainability is also not a state, but it is a continuous process. We need to, 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 to uh, but we need to place this within context, and I have already um, um, mentioned that. And obviously, the social and the poverty issue is important in order to address um, the, um, the impacts of the livestock sector, because many of the, the, the livestock producers that we are talking about are poor producers, but, uh, and, and, and this we, we need to take into account. And we, of course, we need uh, the backing of the politi political will, as well as not only, not only uh, the political side, but also different stakeholders in the value chain, uh, within the value chain. And uh, with that, I, I thank you, Michael, for, for, for bearing with me. I, I'm sorry. <laughs>